In this video, I'm going to reveal how to use ChatGPT to write code in the TDD style, the test-driven development style and why you need to learn this skill to be ready for the future of software engineering. Because one way or another, the future is going to include LLMs to write code. When I'm implementing something, I try to think of what I wanted to do before I start writing the code. Here I've got a function, I didn't implement it yet, I just came up with its name, get object property by path specifier. And because I'm thinking of what I wanted to do, I chose to write some tests. This function isn't implemented yet, remember we're doing TDD, that means test first and then the implementation. I wrote a bunch of tests. I want to pass these two parameters and I want this to be the output. And these tests encode the behavior of the function for me. So I took this code and I pasted it into ChatGPT. I added a few new lines and I said, these are the tests for a function I want you to write. And its response was spot on. It passed the tests. When I run this, it works. Part one, how to prompt. ChatGPT has gotten very good at writing code, but it needs our guidance, it needs our direction, our specific prompts to be able to succeed. So what if we make our prompt test cases instead of questions? In a way, a test case is a very specific way of writing a question, but make sure to never accept its first output. Let's take a look at another example. One of the features is a search feature, and for that I needed to implement a search algorithm or function. So I wrote a bunch of tests to describe what I want this function to do in the TDD style. It accepts these objects with names, and that's what it will search for. It filters on the list with name, it partial matches, it does matching also on tags property, not only on the name property. It does case insensitive matching, and it also does diacritics insensitive matching. To get started, I took this function and I pasted it into ChatGPT. And I added some new lines, the dashes again, and then I said, these are the tests for the search function. I want you to implement it from this scaffold. This time I gave it a scaffold and it is advantageous to pass it a scaffold because now it has extra information. It has the argument names and whatnot, but it also will generate an output in the format that I want. And it won't, if I want export const search, it's not going to give me a function statement suddenly or a class or whatever. And another hit. If I run this, it passes the tests. But remember, we're not going to accept this first result. We are going to refactor this with or without ChatGPT. Now this result isn't perfect. It just lowers the query string itself. It doesn't call the nice normalize function it came up with on, on the query. Why wouldn't it also call that on the query and just on the recipe data? There's also a magical regular expression in there that I don't understand yet, that I want to understand. So I'm going to iterate on it. Explain to me which characters the regular expression is removing and why this was chosen. Be brief, go step by step. It explained it to me pretty clear. Like this is what the range does. It combines these marks and there's a purpose in there. And then I understood this and by saying go step by step, I got its reasoning back and I found an error in its reasoning. So I said, okay, so the reason to add is because this normalized function removes diacritics but not the more complex combined diacritics. And then it explained itself better. The role of this regex after this normalized function is to remove the diacritics, but first it's splitting them from the characters itself. I was testing ChatGPT here. It's still valuable to know your stuff. So I found uh, a good question to ask. Like there is a way to have a more descriptive way to say, remove these diacritics. And what it came up with is this range of characters in, in a Unicode format. And you don't know what it does unless you assign a variable name to this specific string. So I said, hey, let's use a more modern version. What about this? And then it was also able to explain that it didn't choose this because it requires a new version of JavaScript. Actually, I have that. So I can say, okay, let's move forward. I also spoke about the second thing, like let's also call normalize on the query and not only on the results, which I was able to update, of course, and then use the diacritic one. And there we have a nice version. Now I actually went through a similar process in the previous function I've shown, the get object property by path specifier. I went through iterations to improve it. Now, can you rewrite this implementation in a more functional programming style without the mutation? And then it came up with a version that has a recursive function to loop. Now I like the reduced version a bit better because it's a more common idiomatic JavaScript, if, if you will, but I rewrote it a bit because I can do this in a lot less code, shorter lines and more readable than what it came up with. Now what it generated was correct and it put me in the right direction. But I wanted to refactor this further because I know the code style, the code base, I know more of what's going on. So 
I am able to refactor it better in, in the style that me and my team are used to. Part two, the future. Now you don't have to be afraid for your job because it cannot do our job for us. Because software engineering is more than just writing a few functions. Yes, it can write those functions, but software engineering is thinking about the bigger ideas of the code base, about the complexity here and the separation of concerns over there, but also about the naming. What is exactly the right name of this function given the domain that I'm in? It cannot answer these questions as good as a human can. You may have noticed I've only asked it to implement functions for me, not entire modules or classes. That is by design. If you use ChatGPT to write an entire app for you, your code will be a mess. Yes, it will work, but that is setting the bar too low. Our job is more than just getting it to work. We are responsible to think about the code base as a whole to think about the structure of the code, to ask questions like, does this code belong in its own file? Which means the only code that we let ChatGPT write is small isolated parts. And that is why TDD is such a great match for ChatGPT. The value of TDD is not that your code is tested. The value of TDD is that you are thinking about the structure of your code. You are designing your code base as a whole. You are thinking about what you want your interfaces, your coupling and your separation of concerns to look like. And that is the part you should not give to ChatGPT. I think that AI is going to write more and more code for us in the future. But it doesn't mean our jobs are over. It means our jobs are changing. But it's not something we cannot handle. It just means we need to double down on TDD. But everything I just told you isn't going to pay off as much as it could if you're not experienced with TDD yet. And if that's the case, then I highly recommend that you watch this video. Because I really believe that TDD should be the default way of writing code. And this is very relevant right now in the age of AI. The better you are at TDD, the better you will be at writing code together with an AI like ChatGPT. And that's it. If you have any thoughts, please leave a comment and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching.